Welcome in, everybody. You having a good day? I hope so. Here we are. We've come a long ways today. And uh, wasn't able to film a whole lot of it. I was running a little bit short on my uh, memory. So uh, I'll just kind of update you here. Here we go. Well, as you see, we're getting hoses all put in. We've got the top side pressure hoses for the intercooler. They are complete. All right, looking good. Okay, we got our water hose, coolant hose uh, coming over here. We've got this to make yet. And uh, the, that's a one and a half and a two inch. So I've got to uh, get those mated together. Also have a one and a half and two inch down there. You can see it back there. There is the heater line. And uh, the connection is right down there next to it. A little dark down there, you can't see it very well. But that line is coming up to the heater connections so that I have my uh, heat in the wintertime. Last thing is going to do the electric electricity. And once I get the electronics pick set in, I'm oiling it and watering it, and I'm firing this sucker up. It is Tuesday, and I hope you guys' July is going real well. Well, good morning, everybody. It is a uh, warm summer in Oklahoma. Uh, been able to get a little bit of work done. Sorry about the gap in time and everything, but I'm gonna try to catch you up on what we got going here. This is a very important episode uh, of this, uh, taking this engine and uh, putting it in the Ford. We've got two issues that we're dealing with. We're dealing with power steering. We're dealing with um, also the electric and I'm gonna give you some key electric things that you're not finding anywhere else. I've been very frustrated with these people that are doing these, these uh, swaps where they're putting a 5.9 over into an F-350. They don't help you at all with your electric. And I'm gonna do it today, all right? So watch, here we go. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna show you is I've got the hydraulic uh, lines all in for my power steering. The silver one on the left there is the return line. And that is a, a a flush line that we're going to a flare line, I should say, that is going to come back to the return. This is a return. You see that it is quite large, and that down there is quite small. I got to get another um, reducer <clears throat> on that to uh, bring it up to a, a little bit of higher, larger size, um, or find one that I can take this down to a smaller size. So that I, so that I can get that uh, get that looking a little bit more factory in here. All right, let's take a look at the wiring next. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, major uh, component that you need to have connected up for uh, this swap to work, and uh, take a look at this picture of this uh, notebook that I've made, done a lot of research on here, and I'll explain more to you here in just a second. Stand by to the end of the recording and I will have an email address you can send to to get a PDF copy of this handwritten document. We'll see the PDF in just a moment. Okay, now you've taken a look at that. One of the keys that you need to be looking at on that, uh, I'm gonna take a look at it here as I describe it to you. You'll notice that, that in the top, uh, that it says the PCM pins uh, and the object are, is the heading on this. The map uh, sensor, that is pin number 54, pin number 55, blue, green, green, white, and the green-white is what the signal return is coming back on. You're gonna find a lot of green-white wires as you're coming through here, and most of the green-white wires are going to be the signal return. The other one's gonna be the sensor side of it. Look at the MAF, M-A-F, the mass airflow. Uh, there's three lines in there. There's a blue line from pin 57, from pin 58, there's a yellow-violet. That is your signal return, and the pin uh, number 59 has a violet gray um, uh, attribute to it. Uh, also, next one is the oil temp. Oil temp is the uh, pin number 63, 
it is a blue orange and uh, I'll explain more to you more about these how to find them here in just a second you notice it only has one wire the next one does too. coolant temperature pin 67 a yellow line uh, camshaft position sensor you really don't need but some of you may want to find it camshaft position sensor pin 7 brown blue it's a positive uh, pin number 8 gray orange is the negative on the crankshaft position uh, pin number 80 yellow violet and that is your uh, positive on the crankshaft pin number 81 is green green brown it's negative that's the sensor that goes to the harmonic balancer that comes from Dodge uh, that's one. okay I'm inserting this just to tell you that this is the one that you're going to have to connect to the tack helper that you get from swaphelper.com and this is the ones that make your tachometer run nice and smooth so make sure that you go and buy that tack helper and uh, the uh, swap helper combo and that'll make it uh, all work well once you get everything put together on this thing it's kind of hard to get to uh, but the wire sticks up and you should be able to solder them together unless you want to go get you a harness for it or you want to pull a harness from an, an old truck uh, it doesn't matter you're still gonna to have to solder some wires together so I'm just gonna solder them straight in to make it secure okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through um, how you kind of weed down this big bundle of wires so you don't make any mistakes let's go over here and take a look at the old 6-4 Okay, there's the old 6-4, and as you can see, there are some large connections that go over in the old 6-4 for the ignition. And uh, you'll be able to see those connections underneath here, and the big, uh, the big ones over here, right there. So what you want to do is you want to look uh, up here at your bundle. And you want to find all those big connections. Okay, find all those big connections and bring it back to their wiring source and then clip those wiring sources off for all that ignition stuff. You don't need any of the ignition stuff over on the, uh, over on the Cummins. Once you got that over here, there's where it belongs. Okay, let's get back over here to your wiring. Now you can see it's a lot less that's in here. You take the bundles, you uh, bring them up like this, leave you a good little line, pigtail on there because you don't know uh, when you start wiring this back, uh, there might be a source in there that you wanna use. You can look it up in the diagrams and there might be a source in one of these that you wanna use and that's fine. Uh, you can use those for, for various things. Uh, 24 valves, we'll probably want to use some of that stuff that's in there, but this is for a uh, 12 valve that's all mechanical and basically we need five components to it. Let's take a look at those right now. Now what I want to do is I want to uh, show you the shape of the connector and the uh, color of the wire uh, that matches it. So uh, this is the oil temperature uh, connector and there is what it looks like. Okay, and uh, the color of the wires in there so match up to your sheet. So that's why you know that that is oil temp. Uh, all right, let's move on. Now, some of you guys will be using your fan from the 6.4, uh, but some of us don't. I don't. I went to the Dodge, but I use a converter uh, to... Uh, uh, to use the um, uh, big fan part but not the uh, fan clutch all right so here's what it looks like and this plugs into the shroud of the uh, fan uh, the fan shroud may not fit and the fan for shroud does not fit then you can't use that so that's what the fan looks like let's move on here all right grab one off the top here what is this coolant temperature all right, here's what that plug looks like. And here is what the wires look like.
Next, let's go to the crank position. This is the one you're going to have to wire in, but you're going to look for this wire. Here's what the plug looks like. You notice that's completely oval all the way around. There's another one that looks like it, but it has a little corner up at the upper left. This one does not. And there's what the wires look like. Once again, we're doing crank position. Okay, here's the next one. Here's your mat. Absolute pressure, manifold absolute pressure. Here's what the plug looks like. Three of them, three prongs. Make sure and clean those out. That one's not especially clean. It's also not especially dirty, but clean those out. That's what your plug looks like. And here are the wires. Now, in order to match that one up correctly, I had to trace it, trace it back because there's a splice that's made right there where they changed the colors. So you gotta make sure that you are sure what your colors are by tracing back before any splices for your three wires. And there they are. And then all the way back, all the way to the source with that one. Next one we're looking at, this is the AC. You don't need this to run the engine, but you certainly need it to keep cool. Uh, I, I pulled this one uh, and labeled it as I pulled the AC out. And so the color of the wires is purple and white, and <clears throat> also black. It looks pretty sure. But anyway, here's what the plug looks like. Okay. All right. Now this is. I think it's my last one. It is mass airflow. This is on the intake, and I labeled this one as I took the intake off. Here's what the plug looks like. And if you are uh, looking at your sheet right there, you'll see that there's more wires that are actually connected to this that uh, will go to other points but these are the ones that it needs for the computer and there's the wires okay so there's your wiring setup um, I hope that you will use that and uh, be able to make your 6.4 come alive because I haven't tested it but I will make sure to give you the thumbs up thumbs down um, in a comment down below if I have any trouble starting or there's any, uh, uh, any, any one of these that are messed up, I'll come back and I'll correct it. But th that's what it looks like right here. Now, the rest of the day, uh, all I'm gonna be doing is getting a couple of uh, loose connections that are done. Uh, I replaced my automatic transmission lines because they just did not flow right. And so I put them up here and I'm gonna get a um, connector for this, a 90 for this, See, this one goes up, it's all connected in just fine. Suggest that you don't do that uh, unless it's just necessary. It was necessary for me uh, because of the routing. Uh, and uh, so I, I'll show you the rest of that on another, on another video. And uh, one thing that we took off of it. All right, that is the fuel cooler. Fuel cooler, and there's another little pump right back there. And I took that out. It's not necessary because we're going directly into the riser pump, so it's not back on. Okay, the air conditioner condensers up here. I've got the uh, I've got the um, intercooler. I've got all the air wire uh, piped in for the uh, turbocharger. See that it's underneath here. All right, now it comes in up here and goes back in there. Let 
used the old uh, F2, F350 line coming up and then I went with the uh, line that I bought. Dover connects in right there. And uh, so I also have the um, coolant. Um, just kind of got to figure out uh, how you want to do that. I uh, lack one more connection down there. It's no big deal because I'm going to be doing, see that hole down there in the block? I'm going to use my heater. It's going to be heater line and I've got to get the right connection. Uh, the problem is that I'm right next to that lifting hole, a uh, lifting hook um, and that anchor right there and I've got to get a brass fitting uh, nipple that will go higher than that so that I can turn the uh, Turn it back towards that back there. Okay. All right. Well, guys, that's uh, that's it for today. Um, I hope that this one helps you. This is uh, one of the ones that has been one of my pet peeves. Uh, even the guys that I admire out there, like J Rock, J Rock, and and uh, those guys that have done this before me four years ago, they don't give you any help on the wiring. Everybody just says, "Well, get you a diagram and figure it out." Everything else they figure out to do, but they're too lazy, I, in my opinion, to give you guys the information. You got it now from Pop. All right, you guys have a great day. You can tell I'm a little miffed about that. <laughs> have a great day. I'll talk to you later. See you on the next episode. Be sure to subscribe down here on YouTube and be part of the group on, uh, on our uh, on Facebook. Uh, glad to have you in here. I uh, hope this helps you out a whole lot. Leave your comments down below. And, and if you're part of the Facebook group, make your own videos and get them on there, all right? Get your own videos and uh, put them up there. Everybody needs to help get these things done. Uh, be a pioneer, kind of like me. <laughs> See you next time.